It is the uh, criminal element spreading lies and disinformation about our organization as to prevent people coming to us. Some of the rumors might be that we take all the drugs. Yes, we close the nightclubs and we do all the raids, but we resell them. That's, and you know what's interesting? If people believe it. They fall for this kind of... So if there's there's a, a rape case or a child molestation case or a farm murder, to me and my team, and there are others like me that works for me, I've chosen the best out of the country, it doesn't phase us. It's like a mechanic will open a bonnet and look at it. It's no problem. However, I have a chink in my armor in the sense I cannot deal with animal cruelty. I have to look away and I have to walk away because I become irrational. I become extremely aggressive and violent and I want to act and then I make emotional decisions which are wrong. <clears throat> so that is my chink which I have put aside. So I have a unit that deals with anti-poaching and with violent crimes against animals. We've got our own unit. We deal with the, the rhino poaching, the camp lions and all that kind of stuff. It's a very good unit. It's a very strong unit. You can always refer, refer people to us. It's a no-nonsense unit. We don't wait for authorities. You must understand how we work. She has said it. When we get information that horses aren't looked after, there is no paperwork. It is go, fetch, remove. And whoever's in the way gets hurt. And we are prepared to take the consequences for that, especially when it comes to animal cruelty or we have to remove kids out of Nigerian homes or drug homes or other the clause of drug laws. So there's no thing like, all right, let's go draw up some paperwork and have a power and drink some tea and discuss it. There's no such thing. It's a team that goes out. We evaluate always the uh, information. And then out of the information, we make an informed decision. We send the team and we take uh, the necessary action. <coughs> what is your conviction rate like? How many criminals are actually going to jail and stay there? Okay. What is, your, sorry, what is your background? Okay. What is the current situation in the jails and how is that contributing to the continuation of the business? <coughs> okay. Back. Anybody else? Can I ask another question? Yeah. Uh, maybe the impact of your type of job that it has on you personally and the people that work with you, once you go home, the things we don't see, the, what you see every day that you've got to deal with and the impact it's personally got on you or your family or the workers, people that work with you. Okay. Let me answer that first. There is no impact on me because I'm. each one of us has been uniquely designed by God to do something specific or a few things. I've been cut out, in my opinion. I know it in my heart, and I can see that I've been doing this for 35 years. This is what I do. If I drive with that car of mine, and I get stuck next to the road, I have to call somebody. I am completely out of, out of my depth when a car goes stuck. I'm also completely computer illiterate. I have a forensic team that does that, they are brilliant with it, especially with cybercrime. I'll speak a bit about cybercrime and that specific incident that she's mentioned which is presently the biggest crime in the world, which is 14% of the world's money that falls away.